Alright guys, come back in three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dominic Me number 66. Round number two reaction coming into play. Out the ID, the bird getting some work over here. What do you want me only Dan there? Dan there really quickly, what can we check out you? What can we check out some bots for? You the dominant domain and stuff that you do as well. If you like me and you like my media, you can check me out on youtube.com slash VacoClan. And uh, we got a little bit of a reset here on the screen. Uh, Mad Pearl's got to re log real quick and then he'll be right back. I just dropped a Chaos Terminator head and have no idea where it went. Oh dear. Uh oh. Oh, uh, uh, everybody just left the, the lobby. So I guess we're going to have to redo this or. Yeah, they're remaking the lobby. Okay. And, uh, yeah, if you like me and my media, you can see me out at youtube.com slash VacoClan, where you can find past Dominic Green events, individual game bods, in playlists, you can check it out there. There's also a, uh, a search functionality on the channel, you can type in the champion's name, the champion, a player's name, it'll bring you up all the games that include that champion and or that player. Uh, the tagging system is, uh, it's not, it's, it's not particularly exceptional, because it's YouTube tagging system. So like if you typed in a uh, Salon Jack, you, mm -hmm. you would get games where Salon played Jack, and games where Salon was on one team and Jack was on a different team. That will happen too, but it's pretty cool the fact that there's even a limited searchability. Yeah, definitely, and uh, well, at least you can actually have some sort of like looking into, especially for people who aren't really into the dominate the mini, I mean, sorry, to the dominate the meta or anything, looking at um, older games, looking at just games in general to try to come back with and, you know, get a semblance of, um, well, where should I put this champion or where can I put this champion is really good. Also, you can check out all the weekly stuff that is happening on this channel over on twitch.tv slash dominate the minion. Other stuff that happens on the channel, but CHC does bring out quite a bit of this really big main play, so really cool to see that. And some in house is quite sweet. So we get the re invite. I think we'll be setting this one up pretty soon. I want to make sure that everyone's on the right side. Yeah, yeah. So we'll quickly so, tell yeah. everyone how to join the chat channel if you want to hang out with us. Maybe uh, down in the community, community, take a look at this list right and scrolling through here in the VOD. So any VOD viewers out there, all these people in the chat channel, you can join it by going lower right hand corner, you click view chat room, control panel, go up, click share, join the chat room, you tap in Dominate Dominion, you hit enter, and that will put you over in with the rest of us in the Dominate Dominion chat room. It has a 200 person ish tap, so sometimes we won't be able to get in on our really, really busy days because we, we just need more space. Yeah, that is definitely the truth. So get in, get in early, room. make sure you check that. Uh, button up in the top right corner, you know, click uh, the little gear in the window and click auto join on startup and show timestamp. That way you know when the message is posted. Take, uh, so we're going to talk about the chat bands, Nidalee, Kasten, Zeus, Kha'Zix. Nidalee has great pokes, gives vision on the map because of the trap. Kasten has good engage and escape, he has a silence and slow. No silence is particularly brutal. Zeus, great poke, good bruiser, and Kha'Zix is a very powerful and bursty assassin. Yes, definitely. And uh, well, we talked about Kazakh. Uh, we, we talked about Kazakh in the Middle East. We surprised it didn't get banned out the first time, but I mean, we've seen the ban out this time. Um, Kazakh and Jace, Kazakh, and Middle East. Those are the four I usually see. I mean, some of the bans did get through from the first game, but in the second round, it's a little bit more serious. Why so serious? I mean, on that purple flash red side, while we have Suspenda Cox in the, in the blue side. Suspenda, we've seen them quite a bit. We have Generic, we have. Uh, I pre unicorns, they are kind of, you know, members that we usually see for the Dominic Dominion crew, so really cool to see them playing out for this one while Washer Series. I mean, they stood a pretty good round number one, and they repeat that for round two. There's a Fizz ban. I'm going over the Chance yeah. Select screen bans. York, good bottom range of screen, durable character. Wukong has a great engage with an AoE airborne and on reduction. Teemo gives vision on the map. Lots of spell damage to blind is King of Blind is one of the hardest things to do, and I'm sure everyone has had that death where they're like, Well, I couldn't, I just hit him, no! It, it's unfair when you hit the least thing with it, that's not nice. Amumu, a lot of AoE damage, great tank. Lulu, best support, probably in Dominion. 
Maybe along with that, uh, I'd say the other one that's really strong. Well, that was more of a weak made than a true support. And Fizz, Fizz is very interesting. I mean, wouldn't be surprised if that was targeted against someone, but I don't think anyone that is known to playing Fizz. Fizz is extremely bursty, uh, very powerful and mobile character. King Zyra locked in. Zyra has amazing zoning ability, lots of air damage. Airborne, slow, snare, lots of side control, lots of damage. Then they start seeing Fizz Wong and Maokai highlight. Yeah, in. Yeah. has a very good sustain, and his ultimate brings a substantial amount of durability to the team. Plus, he has got two on top of that. And for Toriono on Shizwani, Shizwani makes for a great dive, just some good crowd control with the airborne, and Glacial Prison's an awesome ability. And it's really hyped to see that Glacial Prison get thrown and just land and explode, and people get stunned in a block of ice. It's probably one of the higher hype generating abilities in the game. It kind of reminds me of, uh, of another game called Super Smash Brothers Melee, where you can use something called the Ice Climbers, uh, set up two levels. Yeah, he's <laughs> a really cool guy that used something that, that kind of reminds me of the big body ultimate, where you can block so many in ice for just one second. So. And that's all you need to get the grab on and get that stock off the other guy. Oh man, so yeah, no, you're going to be putting out the hearts of millions and millions of high fans right out there. So I'm playing about this one. It's going to be really cool to see that. Other than that, Maokai. Okay. You know, we usually see him on the bottom lane. You think that's going to actually happen unless we, we see another different pick at the moment. You think that, that you know, Maokai's bottom would be a good thing or is he going to go over the top lane? Uh, Maokai can really go either way. Um, I feel like Rebel Dragon is their bottom laner. I know Dens could do it, mm -hmm. but I, it's more likely that we'll see Dens at top, I think, than this uh, particular team. Now, they're going to bring a lot of tankiness up there, though. So they're going to have to have a couple very... Uh, they're going to have to have a couple durable damage dealers to make up for that, because if you run two tanks, or two tanks, quote-unquote, I don't know what the yeah. better word for that is, but if you run two people that are highly durable, and you run two characters that are very fragile, like let's say, um, just two off the top of my head, uh, Ari and the Fortune are characters that you can blow up very easily, then it's not really going to work out because all they have to do is ignore the two tanks, get through them, wait it out, to get an engagement where it enables them to stop it or two, and then just kind of fight out against the two tanks afterwards, which hurts them if they're in an off offensive position, but benefits them in a the defensive position because then all they need is that Shizwani and Mount Tired away. And seeing them lock in as Annie and Vi, those are champions that typically will not get blown up. Annie, because of that Molten Shield, and Vi is a pretty durable character as well, so they will not be able to have that happen to them. Over on the other side, we're seeing Jana being played by Mad Portal. Mad Portal, also known as is the Mike. Uh, formerly of Blind Pick Sandy. There's Blind Pick Sandy as a team that has been on indefinite hiatus because of school being more active for a couple of members and not being able to regularly participate. As a result, some of the guys have sort of split off into other teams for the time being, and that is how Mad Portal came to be over here. Mad Portal called Mad Portal because in their name change suite, um, you might change to Mad Portal just for giggles, and then High Peoples, mm -hmm. now Commander Peoples, took Zemite's name on his smirk, so Zemite can't get his own name back. But he is the best support player, period, in Dominion. And that's why Lulu gets banned against because he has a 100% win rate with Lulu. So don't let him get that champion, it's bad for you. Now paired up with Caitlyn, Jaden with the slow, Jaden with the airborne is going to give a lot of opportunity for Caitlyn to deliver damage. As well as Zyra being there for even more crowd control. I can see this being a game of Caitlyn running the show following setup from other characters. J4 as well is also going to help out with that. So there's a lot of crowd control and sets going for Topon the Cox's team. And I think that if Caitlyn play, can play safe, then they can really take advantage of that. So yeah, I can definitely see that coming to play. You know, Protective Caitlyn was kind of too supporty uh, champions, although you could use them as mazes as well. Uh, IP unicorns with that Zyra and uh, Jenna have quite a bit of AP damage, just immediately with just some of their skills, but then again, Jenna, they're known as a support, can do a lot more with her uh, utility kit. So we'll see how the match portal will do with that. And Jenna, you know, it's probably going to be a big point. What do you think it is going to be that bottom lane for Sephana, though? 
for so fun to, the bottom lane, I feel like it's going to be Michael Bay, Michael Bay Trundle, Michael Bay's a bottom laner, Trundle is a great bottom lane, Trundle has a lot of sustain, Trundle is a raid boss, it takes a five man to be able to take him down sometimes, <laughs> late game man, his durability just gets ridiculous, you can bully him early game, but if he's going for like a Ravenous Hydra build down bottom because he needs that wave clear from the Ravenous Hydra, otherwise he's going to get buried in minions, but once he gets that item, he really starts to come back pretty hard afterward. So there, there's sort of a sweet spot where you can really beat up Tundle. Yeah, and I will, I will say that the Meryl Dingo, when he doesn't have all the items, is probably that smart. Ooh, but, like, you know, yeah, which we're going to see Rebel Dragon Maokai in the bottom lane is probably what's going to happen there. We see Vi up top with Pantheon being picked as well. Pantheon is... I like Pantheon because he has gold map presence, grand skyfall, he's great at finishing people off, he has that shield block, he has a stun. Important thing to note about Pantheon though, his heart seeker strike is interruptible, it is a channel, you can have your damage mitigated by crowd control, and there's a lot of crowd control on the enemy team, so I don't think he's going to be able to rely too much on heart seeker strike, because he has to deal with Jarvan's airborne, he has to deal with Janna's knockback, Janna's airborne, he has to deal with Zyra's airborne as well. So there's going to be a lot of um, watching for the opportune moment to use that. Yeah, I think it's going to be, have to, it will have to be a Skyfall to kind of secure kill to onto Northfall to really get into that phase. So, and then Fuzo is going to have to do a lot of, well, missing maneuverability things to really get around into killing the back line or even killing one of the support all AP kind of assassin mages that are going to be in the front line as well. I mean, I see Unicorn before, I mean, you saw it in the last game, did pretty okay trying to zone out, trying to get into the faces of the enemy team, although YC2 has pretty much mitigated that one down. This time with IP Unicorn, do you think J4 is going to have more of a success, or with his ultimate and with, well, the, the sense that Savannah Cox has to kind of get into the team of YC2, do you think that's going to go working against them for, uh, Kind of well, Jarvan has the ability to set up shop in the team with Cataclysm, and there are other champions on the team that can actually take advantage of that now. Janna, Zyra, Caitlyn, all of them have Aries line effects, so he can box them in and blow up the new team. Although, if he does that, he's going to get stuck in... I, I, could, I could see potential here for a Cataclysm that turns into the Brick Oven, where he drops Cataclysm and Aang just fills the whole freaking thing with fire. If Pantheon, like, if a bad cataclysm happens, Pantheon can take advantage of that with Heart to Strive, and Aang can take care of that with Incinerate and Tibbers as well. So, it, it can go both ways. I think if it's cut up properly, though, I think they should be able to capitalize on correctly. Although, either way it happens, Caitlyn should always be safely outside of it to deliver the damage. So even if J4 boxes and someone fragile like Janna with him, and Jenna gets turned into a fine pink mist from all the damage, then Caitlyn is still sitting back and sniping shots into the team. Now, Annie and Pantheon are pretty durable, although it feels like that uh, Pantheon is the squishiest one here, which is a really strange thing to come out of my mouth. Although Pantheon, I think, is going to be the one who can do Caitlyn in. I really like, Bird, how you mentioned that Grand Skyfall against the back line. That's something that we actually do not see very often in Dominion. And that's something that I wish characters would do more is Pantheon, Twist of Fate. They just come in off screen in the back and then walk up to the fight from behind and destroy Ezreal, Caitlyn, Varus, Ash, whomever. Mm. Because mm -hmm. it's something that I think will really help out. Usually, when I see in Global as well for Dumb and Dominion, or, or in Dominion, you know, they usually use it to like fist up a point or try to get to the point a little bit faster as well. And it's like, yeah, you should. Do that and it's always good to use the mobility. I mean, that's why Catherine's always bad no matter what. But I mean, there are some instances where you know mobility is good, but doing the favor of trying to win our team fight faster so that you can capture out the points a little bit better might be a little bit stronger. Come back in this one, round number two coming into play. So, Sam Acosta on the blue side, why so serious on a purple slash red side? L3 IOD going to be doing so much casting. With the one on Gana and the blue side, we're going to see IP Unicorns on that J4. We have Hexus Gana on the match portal, or is it Mike? So now going to be playing that Zara. North Paul going to be playing Resistance Caitlyn. 
And last week, but not least, is Michael Bay. And they've been playing that traditional Chando not the, you know, little slugger, not the regular ice one you see. Just the two different ones. And one half the passing for this year with you. And it is an gander. What do we have on that purple slash red side? Over on the other side, on white this year, this team, we have Sotoriano playing as Annie, Genz Buja playing as Pantheon, Week 1 playing as Sejuani, William Swiftfoot playing as Vi, and Rebel Dragon playing as Haunted Maokai. I am really interested to see the place in both these teams, especially being able to see a Zyra pick. Zyra is a very powerful character. Sometimes doesn't get banned, sometimes doesn't get picked. Sometimes he's picked and banned throughout a tournament. So I really am interested to see what generic is able to do with Zyra in this game, especially how she's going to fit in to the rest of that team, Tom. Yeah, definitely. And we'll see how that's going to work out today for both teams right now. It's still just loaded in for everyone. Actually, everyone, oh, it's still which one, though, for me. I'm going to play a pretty good team on the first round. Now I'm going to be playing that as Wani. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this will work out. I feel like maybe YCC has had a, not an easier time, but at least a time where they had to be back for now with the Fanta Cox, a team that is pretty good. We'll see how that will have to re react and release this one. You need to change the blue box. Oh, okay. Cool. Someone talking about the uh, team tags in the chat. Yeah. Uh, I have confirmation from IP Unicorn himself, the team captain that is, uh, uh, SF Cox with a capital S, F, and C, lowercase O, X. I just found that out recently, did not know myself. Yeah, you see a girl know those tag lines, I just kind of make it up on the go, and, uh, yeah, sometimes everybody else wants it a little different. I have a screenshot, the Dory Vita I have a screenshot of him saying that, I will give it to you on the internet. I'm actually kind of sad that these team tags aren't shown on the mobile brackets, because that's how all my internal statistics are calculated, starting items being bought here. Just wanted to get some of those requisite ruby crystals early on. Boots Fossil just like coming out for a lot of people. Rebel Dragon going for the Catalyst first. It's going to like that extra little bit of stain for a couple first levels in the bottom lane. And then a Trundle also going for the Grezzer first, which uh, has that, that, that armor, that life steel, which is going to help them sustain in the bottom lane as well. Yeah, definitely, and, uh, Pantheon right now, not buying out any items, but we're going to buy it out a little bit sooner than, rather than later. And we'll see the matchup, Trendle versus Maokai. What do you think about that matchup with Embattled Man? Going to be good for Trendle, or will Maokai really stand through it? I think it's going to be one of the most stalemate bottom lanes that I could possibly think of. Because while Trendle deals damage, Maokai is absolutely amazing at soaking damage. I foresee a lot of friction in the bottom lane, like a lot of harass that doesn't really go anywhere. I also foresee a lot of ganks. Now those ganks are going to be really brutal ganks, so people are going to have to stick down there for a while, because to muscle down either Maokai or Trundle is going to take a lot of effort from whomever comes down to the ganks. So I expect you to see actually some uh, two-man ganks, if they want to actually unseat someone. Unless someone needs a little bit careless and gets a little bit low. It's all depending on what's going to happen on the windmill right now. Everyone just fighting down. Weeks one going to be the one in big fun. I see you're going to do some damage, and we're going to see them through the cover go down. Good stun from Annie. Uh, off the bat, though, all of their team is a little bit behind in this engagement so far. Falling back towards the plant, not very friendly for Annie's health. Just what is able to take the KB from Zyra, although it's going to get picked off by a couple of lanes. Champions by really didn't have any way to get away from that. Was able to delay long enough, perhaps? I'm not sure. They haven't been able to him to get it interrupted and will not be able to. Pantheon is going to fall back and join up with the team. And let's see if they slow chart on around the map. Yeah, we are seeing a great um, ordinate of people going over into the bottom lane. We have been able to be cut off by week one, and now we're going to see Sakurino try to come up and get a cut down. Now Max Portal going to help out as well. We're going to see a lot of people down here, and Michael Bacon going to get caught. And Michael Bay taking a lot of damage, retreated, and there's that two, three, four man gank in the bottom lane. She's wanting to turn around, heading the opposite direction. Zyra and Janna Baby saying the tower. However, with five in the bottom, that shows you it's the perfect time for Unicorn to go for the drill. And he may get the neutral before they arrive, but no, the garrison from week one shutting that down entirely. 
Yeah, definitely Majerus and then everybody else having to back away North Paul. And a little bit of a situation where he does not want to be the squishy in front of a big tank. So a really, really good job from the team. And I did everything cut off and see what we can do. Sorry, with a good snare in the middle of the map. Able to tag Annie with it. Reach one coming around the side, closing in on the enemy team. They want to pick someone off. They find Jarvan. And uh, again, a little slow on the response taking back in the fight. Good stun from Annie, but there's no one to follow it up, unfortunately. Annie using Tibbers to get the AoE stun. No damage to follow up. Swiftlet diving through, still no follow up damage. Again, finally connecting with the portal, takes the portal down. It will turn their attention towards J4, blocked out for a moment by the Cataclysm. J4 able to retreat. A couple of great stuns and touches in that fight, but champions were just not in the right position to pick up the KDs there. Yeah, it was really unfortunate to see and I couldn't really get anyone else to help out. And this is what you were saying before, though. They have a really tanky team, and unfortunately the least tanky person was Champion, and Champion wasn't even near the place where they wanted to get into damage, so... Is it going to be really a lot building on just pressure and token when it is just breaking down somebody, and that's going to be a very dangerous thing why the series has to play around. Most of the people are heading down to the bottom side of the map. Looks like there's going to be another two-man gank for Trundle. And looks like Vi is going to be the top while this is going on. Trundle gets a sense that, hey, something might be up. And he's going to full on retreat all the way back to his tower. Up above here in the bushes, Unicorn finds Toriono. And while the team is tangled up down here, the play being made for top as well. You know, Swift going to be dangerously low for a little bit. We one going to be taking a lot of shots from the North Paw. And now North Paw going to be pushed in. Swift going to be taking down right quickly. One shot, one kill. And now North Paw going to try to capture that point with one. Um, it's, it's week one. He's just staying there. Going to be charging with North and win. And unfortunately, going to go down. Pantheon going to interrupt a little bit. Yeah, Good stun on Unicorns, but the shield, maybe he was going to be able to get away. Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't lose that, but they didn't know that. It was probably going to be unfortunate, or unable to have to reach out to that point in the game. So it was serious, and then we group, come back, and I'm liking the play that they've been doing. They've been putting a lot of pressure by, and I know, I mean, yeah, he's been able to push quite a bit. But he hasn't really been able to do too much with that one. Alright, Clairvoyance also pushed him back. Coming from Annie, it looked like. Or not Annie. Yeah, coming from Annie. Yeah. As she went down to the bottom part of the map. The top, as Swanee revealed, is interrupted by the ace in the hole, I believe, from Caitlin. Good long range effect. He used to interrupt that capture. And oh, the snap trap! On Pantheon, completely denying his ability to focus Caitlyn, but they're able to stun the portal, knock back from Janna, gets them away. Janna from the back, though, the slow on health. The shield may keep him alive. Yes, and the snap trap, stopping Reach from being able to close the distance and connect with Janna's win over the shield would fall. Yeah, great job over there with Bottom Lane as well. Good, 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 good stuff coming up from Tunnels and keeping up and stuff alive. But yeah, very, very smart little take with North Paw helping up the switch from that portal. He's about to know it's alive. Mm -hmm. He's capturing in on the tower. They are going to be able to push it to a neutral. Can they take advantage of that? No. Spirit and Dens are going to recall. He did not quite have enough health to feel comfortable getting into that engagement. Caitlyn's running the flash. It is going to help her. Caitlyn does not have a particularly good escape. She does have an anti caliber net, which gives her a little bit of distance, like a dash. But using that flash, that flash can keep her alive for a significantly longer period of time. Flash is not necessarily the best spell in Dominion, but it is damn handy on an AD carry like Varus, Ash, or Caitlyn, who don't really have an escape mechanic of their own. Yeah, I mean, the caliber net can not push you away or put you to a enemy, but you do want to have that secondary flash just in case. Oh, <laughs> the charge denied by the airborne from the portal. Good job by Mike, uh, the Mike doing that one, and now we're going to see Weeks try to pick out the relic. The portal just going to go away even more so, and Mike Hughes then will play in the next second. Again, can his own away from the gift that they want that on Pantheon, and oh, just narrowly able to pick it up before uh, Jane was able to connect. Uh, Weeks one could have got the grace of but not up yet. He's going to go wait for that the target to go down. He's going to go right like, there in Oxygen. Uh oh, Jen is an awful place. On this lower part of the fight. Yeah, because he won it. I think that he's going to go down quite a bit. And now we're just using that to go down for that period. 
And they get to Caitlyn, though? We will find out. We could, could play still prison. Connect. A did not have a stun at the moment. Tried to charge him up as quickly as possible, but not able to get it in time. Janet coming back from the side. Mary, um, unfortunately, not there for that fight. Buck able to keep them back and away from his ally, Caitlyn, long enough for North Paul to deliver that damage and escape from the fight. So even though Janet did die, Caitlyn was still able to make the most of that bad situation. I think the big thing was the Pantheon did his own out to One, it did not provide any damage. It did not provide too much anything during that whole... Thing and the worst happened. part is he had the Storm Shield on top of that. So there's a Storm Shield that really didn't get the most effectiveness that it could. Going back over to the bottom lane, we're going to see Weak Born try to cut up onto Michael Bay. Michael Bay is going to try to get around and out using Solar Skills. He's going to be able to just dodge it a little bit more. And now we do see Max Bortle going to hop out his little Kendall friend. Ooh. Yeah, he's on the back side to try to come up. Pantheon coming in from the back, although the fight had moved a significant distance towards the Boneyard. Pantheon was really in trouble early, I feel. And connects with the portal for a little bit of damage. Wait on the heart to strike. Gets you a good channel on that off. Knock back from support, helping to create some distance taking it away. And it looks like they should be able to fall back safely, but in the case of but while that was going on, they see how many people are here, and they divert some forces over the drill and they take up that point instead. It's the second yeah. time they've used that uh, that bottom lane gank to pressure for drill. Yeah, and it's the thing that why this series has to do really come back into this game because it looks like with all the using groups that are happening at top, it really hasn't gone their way. Again, we talked about the tension in the beginning, and it might be, you know, by the main back, because Bruce going to get caught again, you know, it's a great grappling route, and Bruce gets taken out even before a fight actually starts. And now Rebel Dragon by himself on the point, throws down the vengeful maelstrom, keeps it up for quite a while, once he's the zone, because they know that's going to be activated at any moment, Glacial Prison, activates as well. Four people being held up in the bottom point and being zoned out by Caitlyn so she can't make a play on the upper part of the map. Swiftfoot trying to send as best he can. Pantheon on his way down does not have the grand skyfall, however, may be able to keep it neutral if he wants to go for it. Nope, does not want to get into that fight. And yeah, he's going to go for the top, but Caitlyn is going to be up there zone. Yeah, great job by them, and it's been pretty much the fan of using that advantage of the well, protection of the ABC, but also just cutting down and cutting out Brusa for most of this fight. And we talked about it before, and Brusa had any merciful damage that was supposed to do the damage. And we're getting cut out each and every time and getting cut down. Very close to it. Oh, Toriono, you could kill Northpaw, but you gonna get picked off by the mic instead, unfortunately, swinging through with that Zephyr. Able to take down Annie, pick a pick through the wall, weeks escaping in that general direction. Jana throwing down the hex tech sweep to cut off one of the two packs. Yordle snap trap, why are you there? That's a, a snare into a slow pull around. Nope. Quick knockback to keep them away. Channels that so quickly that you don't even get to see the graphics of the CD knockback. Full stun, no damage to follow it up, unfortunately. Now Sterling does not have a stun to try and make a move on. Caitlin, not quite sure that the Grand Skyfall was necessary, but it does get him out in an aggressive position on the map much faster. With Zyra and J4 lagging behind, Caitlyn is not in a good position right now. She's so far away, she can't contribute to that top fight, especially with Ace in the hold down. There we go, two unicorns going to go right back in, then Bruce is the other gun getting taken down. Great job by IP Unicorn not focusing and knocking down onto the countdown each and every time. Not to see Anna next damn target, and the other be taken down by North Falls. One, two, three, snipe with the other attack. And we're going to see the backup of the whole team, but it is only with the one and the only weak be <laughs> able to well, stay out alive for just a little bit longer. You know, I think CM gets this to run and. He's going to come back up. And we is able to chase, get it away. Snared by Zaya for a little bit of damage, but should be okay. 25 viewers out there, I want you to know that I got the 2v1. Uh, Trundle versus Mal and Vi down the bottom lane, if you want to check that out. Uh, that Vi will be posted by Monday. Neutral point, bottom lane, Rebel Dragon defending with William Swiftfoot. And focusing on uh, Michael Bay's Trundle as best they can, but they return their attention over to the portal instead because Trundle's health is just not going anywhere. And Sakuya Ono dead, unfortunately, on the uh, other side of the map. We just one try to contribute as far as best we can, but Trundle just shows absolutely no sign of stopping down here. 
No, there is no stopping the big, big, fat man, and we swung to be taken down quite quickly from all the sledgehammer shots of Michael Bay. Now, we did see the neutralizer in the Druza in the back line, but unfortunately, Druza is going to get taken out. Oh, today, that was Jay Forrest's oh. kill. How could you? He wanted that. He needs to see his family. Uh, then Druza able to neutral that power on the upper side of the map, although it is going to get picked up now. All it does is slow down the next health game just slightly, and Amy may not even be able to get this point back. No, Northpaw just boldly walking up, snap trap, great snap trap behind, catching by the 90 caliber net back, throws another snap trap, and Vi just goes through it, zero care, is going to dash away, the airborne not going to connect, but it's going to be fine. Now they're going to try to catch up on the Northpaw fire. Oh, good there from Northpaw. But it's all the snatch ups all the time, and there is no stopping in the puppets each and every day for what they do. You've got to have that, you know, those calories in your diet, you calories, or your brain rocks, you live in the if you don't have them. Oh, well, we do see a 2v1 day again happening at bottom. Michael Bay is just sustaining right through it. Double Dragon Silbo so can't actually contribute, and we one. Probably going to get sniped out, and it is going to need this game instead of that. Michael Bay with so much sustain in that, in this game. I mean, 8 one six. the only time he died was that very early gank that we saw. And Big Game going off to Savannah Cash, picking up the round of two matchup and the round number three in just a little bit. Why so serious? I mean, he did show a really good job today in round number one and round number two. We, we could have seen a little bit more, but unfortunately, you're going to be knocked out, and we'll, we'll see you again, not next week, though. I just heard from uh, CBC that we aren't actually going to dominate the main next week. Oh, no, next first week tournament. We are going to support the LOL Pro Dominion Showdown by not running a tournament that week. If they want to run a Dominion tournament, then you know what? We are all about having other people come and experiment with this game mode, so we're not going to run an event ourselves that week that all our players are free, all our viewers are free, all of us casters and admins are free to go and help out the Wall Pro Dominion Showdown guys, play in it, do whatever to uh, help support them in their foray into the game mode. You, you mean, you know, take over and actually win the tournament from, like, St. Justice and all the... Or, well, it won't be St. Justice, but it will be some people from there. That'll be really... An interesting watch, so definitely support them, and, uh, well, they'll support this game mode as well. But, if you already need to sign up, sign up the week after, and we'll be getting you in for that. But, congrats to Savannah Cox, moving on, and we'll see if they can get on through round three, round four, and get into that final matchup. I think round four is the final matchup, but we'll get that in draft soon. It is L3 ID, the Burger Games Awards, with one and only gender, and we'll be right back.